We start with three positive integers a, b, and c that satisfy this constraint. Our goal is to prove that this expression is always a perfect square. What makes this problem beautiful is that it showcases one of the most elegant proof techniques in mathematics. The clever insight here is to reframe this expression. Let's give it a name and call it k. So k represents this entire expression we're interested in. From our constraint, we know k is a positive integer that's at most c. Now here's where the magic happens. To reveal the quadratic structure, we want to set this equal to 0 by subtracting k from both sides. This gives us 0 on the left side. Now, let's group the terms on the right by powers of a. We have the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant terms. This rearrangement reveals the beautiful quadratic structure in the variable a. Flipping it around gives us standard form. This quadratic equation with integer coefficients is the engine that will drive our entire proof. To prove k is a perfect square, we'll use proof by contradiction. We assume k is not a perfect square and show this leads to an impossibility. Here's our central assumption. k is not a perfect square. We'll work with this fixed value of k and the given c. Our quadratic must have another root. Let's call it a prime. By Vieta's formulas, the sum of the roots equals the coefficient b times c. To find a prime, we simply subtract a from both sides. This immediately shows that a prime must be an integer, since a, b, and c are all integers. Vieta's formulas also give us the product of the roots, which will be crucial for what comes next. We found another integer root, a prime. Now we need to figure out whether it's positive, negative, or zero. First, let's explore what happens if a prime equals zero. We start with the product of roots formula. Now let's substitute zero in for a prime. This gives us a times zero on the left. Simplifying the left side leaves us with zero equals b squared minus k. Adding k to both sides isolates k. This shows k would be b squared, which is a perfect square, but this contradicts our assumption, so a prime cannot be zero. Next, let's test whether a prime can be negative. Let's write a prime as negative t, where t is a positive integer. Substituting this into the original relation for k, we see all terms are positive. Since t and b are positive integers, t squared plus b squared is strictly positive. This means k must be strictly greater than the remaining term. And since t is at least 1, this remaining term is at least b times c. Chaining these inequalities together, we prove that k must be strictly greater than b times c. Now we have a problem. We just proved b times. c is less than k, but our hypothesis states that k is at most c. This gives us the absurd inequality that b times c is strictly less than c. Since c is a positive integer, we can divide both sides by c without changing the inequality. This leads to the conclusion that b is less than 1. This is impossible for a positive integer, so a prime cannot be negative. Having ruled out 0 and negative values, we've proven something crucial. For any positive integer solution, Vieta's formulas always generate another positive integer solution. This solution generating mechanism is the key to our final argument. Consider the set S of all possible sums A plus B for solution pairs that work with our fixed K and C. By our initial assumption, a solution exists, so this set S contains positive integers. By the well ordering principle, it must contain a minimum element. Let's choose that solution with the smallest possible sum and call it the pair a0 and b0. Since the equation is symmetric in a and b, we can label them such that a0 is at least b0 without changing their minimal sum. Now we generate the other root, a1, for this solution pair. But first, a crucial check. For a1 to be positive, the numerator must be positive. What if it's zero? If b0 squared minus k were 0, then k would be a perfect square. 
This contradicts our assumption that k is not a perfect square. Therefore, the numerator is strictly positive, and so a1 is a positive integer. Now we analyze the size of a1, starting from its definition. Because k is a positive integer, the numerator is strictly less than b0 squared. This gives us the first link in our chain. a1 is strictly less than this fraction. Next, we use our critical assumption that a0 is at least b0. Since b0 is at most a0, replacing one factor in the numerator shows that this fraction is at most b0. Let's put those two pieces together. a1 is less than this fraction, which in turn is at most b0. This proves that a1 is a positive integer that is strictly smaller than b0. So we have a new valid solution pair. Let's examine the sum of its components. Since a1 is less than b0, their sum is less than twice b0. More directly, since a1 is strictly less than a0, the new sum must be smaller than the original sum. This is our final contradiction. We started with a solution that had the smallest possible sum, yet we constructed another valid solution with an even smaller sum. This impossibility means our initial assumption was wrong. The only logical point of failure was our premise. The assumption that a solution could exist for a non-square k must be false. Therefore, for any positive integers a, b, and c satisfying the condition, the expression must be a perfect square. And that completes our proof. Let's see this theorem in action with a concrete example that satisfies our constraint. Consider the triple where a is 2, b is 1, and c is 2. Let's calculate k for this triple. First, we substitute in the values. Next, we evaluate the squares. Then, we evaluate the product. We perform the addition and the subtraction. We find k equals 1. We must check our constraint. Is k between 0 and c? Yes, 1 is between 0 and 2. This is a valid triple. And as our theorem predicts, k equals 1 is indeed a perfect square. Interestingly, if we apply the Vieta jump to this solution, the other root a prime is 0. This is exactly what our case analysis predicted would happen when k is a perfect square. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this mathematical journey, please like, subscribe, and share with others who might appreciate elegant proofs like this one.